So good morning everyone. Today we are going to start the Bishop's Candlesticks. This is an adaptation by Normal McKinnell. This is a play. Now for students, a play is mainly in dialogue form. These are actors acting out and they are acting as well as speaking dialogues. Now for a student, this is where you need to improve and understand the importance of punctuation. Now let me show you what I mean. These are all dialogues by the way. Let's look at, let's start in a very simple practical way. Let's see the first line. Mary, after Mary there's a comma. Isn't the soup boiling yet? Question mark. Next dialogue. Not yet comma madam. Full stop. So the comma, full stop, question mark, exclamation mark. These are very much elements and translated into the dialogue. So as you write it, this is how it's supposed to be said. Now let's have a vote on this. British or American or Indian. There are certain schools which, you know, they stress upon a certain accent, American accent. Or, but that's not really us, isn't it? But the only uh, good thing I can find about is that they speak words very clearly because it is their language. English is not our language. And when I speak or you speak, it's with a certain accent, the way you are speaking normally in your mother tongue. But the way English as it is supposed to be spoken, I think it should be the British English, the English from England. So let us hear what it is supposed to sound like. Marie, isn't the soup boiling yet? All right, so do you get the importance of punctuation now? Most of you in your writings, you hardly put any comma or full stop. Sometimes some of your sentences go on and on for 30, 40, 50, 100 words. That should not be there. Use, use comma and full stop and question mark. So right. the play itself, firstly, let us have a summary or the brief outline of what it is. Imagine this is the English language, how it's supposed to be spoken. I don't say you copy the British or the American or the any other accent, but this is how it is supposed to be spoken. Let's have a brief summary of The Bishop's Candlesticks by Norman McKinnell. The Bishop's Candlesticks by Norman McKinnell is a very sensitive play, which is an adaptation of a section of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. The play which is very interesting, and captivating, is based on the theme, that love and kindness, can change a man. Most people, do not, take up crime, willingly. Instead, they are forced, to enter the world of crime, by ruthless people, or circumstances, beyond their control. The play opens in the bishop's house. It is a cold winter night. On the mantelpiece, there are two, very handsome candlesticks. They are quite out of place, with the plain furnishing of the room. Marie, the maidservant, is seen stirring some soup on the fire. The bishop's sister, Pasam, is laying the cloth on the table. She looks worried. It is already eleven o'clock. She wonders where, her brother, the bishop, can be, at this late hour. She asks Marie, if there is any message. Marie tells her, that the bishop, has gone to see her ailing mother. Pasam, snubs her. Pasam asks Marie, if she has placed the salt cellars, on the table. Marie tells her, that the bishop has sold the salt cellars, to pay the house rent, of Mir Grungois. Who was being troubled, by the bailiff? Pasam curses the old lady. She laments, that in this way, the bishop would sell everything. He has already sold many of his belongings, to help others. The bishop enters. He tells Marie, that her mother, is feeling better now. It is very cold outside. So he gives his comforter to Marie, and asks her to go home. Pasam is angry with the bishop. She says that every clever person will dupe him. She also says, that he would give away everything. The bishop says, that there is so much suffering in the world, and he can do so little. Pasam taunts, that one day, 
he would sell the candlesticks also. But the bishop assures her, that he would never sell them, as they are the symbol of love of his mother. However, in the very next breath he feels bad, to set such store, or material, or earthly value, by them. Today we will study only this first scene, but before we do that, let us understand the characters or the actors in this play. I hope that uh, when things are normal, I cannot give a definite date when it will be, you will be able to act it out as well. There are very few characters, and mind you, this is something that was created or written or adapted by Norman McKinnell in 1908. The main characters are the bishop and the convict. And then we have Persom, who is the bishop's sister and a widow. And then we have yeah. Marie, who is also part of the bishop's household as a maid, as a maid servant. And then we have the smaller characters like the soldiers or the sergeant or let's say the French police. So here we have just two main characters, the bishop and the convict. And then we have the supporting characters of Persom and Mary. Persom and Mary begin the play, they are in the beginning. And in the middle of the play and towards the end, Persom makes a brief entry. But the large part of the play, let us say 95% of the play, is a dialogue or an interaction or a conversation between the bishop and the convict. And the time period is also set in the beginning of the last century. And the place is in on the outskirts of from Paris or Paris. I think it's about the same distance as Kangpokpi from Imphal. So it's not exactly in the capital, it's outside. This is the setup or the diagram of the stage. So it's a very simple setup. This is how they would want it. By the way, stage, movies, theater, it's not just the actors. There's so many people who are involved. You can call it an industry in itself. There are people who have to design the stage, the set. There are the sound people who look after the, the audio nowadays. In the past, of course, there was no, no electronics. Then you have the video people, you have the light, you have the makeup, you have the costume people, you have the people who write the scripts, and you have the people who run behind the scenes and organize everything, even till the people who arrange the food for the actors or the transport. So it's an industry in itself. Now this is what the writer, in this case, they say that the adapter Roman McKinnell would have wanted the stage to look like. So today, We'll just go to the first scene. Uh, let me make you hear the, the audio first. It's a conversation between Mary and Perso. Or this is the script rather. The script is in written form and the actors act it out. They look at the punctuation, the comma. Comma means you got to pause. Question mark means you got to ask a question. And then full stop means you got to stop there and continue again. So these are little clues. And in brackets also, they would put certain clues. For example, looking at the clock means they would be looking at the clock which is there in the room. So let's hear the dialogue first. Marie, isn't the soup boiling yet? Not yet, madam. Well, it ought to be. You haven't tended the fire properly, child. But, madam, you yourself made the fire up. Don't answer me back like that. It is rude. Yes, madam. Then don't let me have to rebuke you again. No, madam. I wonder where my brother can be. It is after 11 o'clock, and no sign of him. Marie. Yes, madam. Did Monsignor the bishop leave any message for me? No, madam. Did he tell you where he was going? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Then why haven't you told me? Stupid. Madam didn't ask me. But that is no reason, for you're not telling me, is it? Madam said only this morning I was not to chatter, so I thought. Ah, oh, mon dieu. You thought? Ah, oh, it is hopeless. Yes, madam. Don't keep saying yes, madam. Like a parrot. Nincompoop. No, madam. Well, where did Monsignor say he was going? To my mother's, madam. To your mother's indeed. And why, pray? Monsignor asked me how she was, and I told him she was feeling poorly. You told him she was feeling poorly, did you? And so my brother is to be kept out of his bed, and go without his supper. 
because you told him she was feeling poorly. There's gratitude for you. Madam, the soup is boiling. Then pour it out, fool, and don't chatter. No, no. Not like that. Here, let me do it. And did you put the salt cellars on the table? The silver ones? The silver ones, madam? Yes, the silver ones. Are you deaf, as well as stupid? They are sold, madam. Sold. Sold. Are you mad? Who sold them? Why were they sold? Monsignor the bishop told me this afternoon, while you were out, to take them to Monsieur Gervais, who has often admired them, and sell them for as much as I could. But you had no right to do so without asking me. But, madam, Monsignor the bishop told me. Monsignor the bishop is a, ahem. But, but, what can he have wanted with the money? Pardon, madam, but I think it was for Mara Gringoire. Mare Gringoire indeed. Mare Gringoire. What, the old witch? Who lives at the top of the hill, and who says she is bedridden, because she is too lazy, to do any work? And what did Mare Gringoire want with the money, pray? Madam, it was for the rent. The bailiff would not wait any longer, and threatened to turn her out today if it were not paid, so she sent little Jean to Monsignor to ask for help, and... Oh, mon Dieu! It is hopeless, hopeless. We shall have nothing left. His estate is sold, his savings have gone. His furniture, everything. Were it not for my little dot, we should starve, and now my beautiful... Beautiful... Salt cellars. Ah, it is too much, too much. <laughs> Madam, I am sorry, if I had known. Sorry? And why? Pray. If Monsignor the bishop chooses to sell his salt cellars, he may do so, I suppose. Go and wash your hands. They are disgracefully dirty. Yes, madam. All right, so that was the first scene, and that is what we will be discussing today. So I hope you have been observing. Now please answer quickly, and then we can end this session. So there are four main characters, but in the first scene, you see only two Two actors or two characters? Who are they? What are their names? Mary and Persil. All right, very good. Who is Mary or Marie? The housemaid. Very good. Who is Persil? The bishop's sister. Very good. What else do we know about her? We know her. Okay. Okay, what about her character, her nature? This is a very common question in examination. Com complain Char box. <laughs> yes, complain box. Very good. In this first section or the first scene, you would know that the nature of Persom is she is very dominating. And as you said, some of you said a bit of a complain box and a little strict and a little hard, a little harsh especially upon Mary. Let me give you examples. You haven't tended the fire properly. These are examples you would have to write in your answer to prove that her character or her nature is like this. She was a very rude person in many ways and very strict and harsh and dominating, a bit cruel. And then the first question was, where was the bishop? It was already getting late. Now, after 11 o'clock would mean after 11 p.m. That means it's quite late. And she's wondering where is the brother. She is worried. This also shows you another nature of Persom. She is a bit protective, somewhat like a motherly figure in the house, as a woman should be. If you're late coming back at home, your parents, especially your mother, would be quite worried. It tells you about her nature, a very protective nature, looking out for her brother. Even though we don't see him yet, we know that he's a kind person. Even going out late at night to meet a sick person. In this case, Mary's mother. Monsignor is a title of respect. It's in French. Now, normally it is reserved to a prince, to a cardinal, an archbishop or a bishop. Monsignor. Directly it means my lord. So the salt sellers have been sold. Now... Why has it been sold? Before we go to the reason, this is another example of the kindness of the bishop. Selling his own personal things, his own property to help 
others. Now the reason let us see to help Mir Gringoire. Who was this person? Now this person was an old woman who actually had a problem because it was time to pay the rent. So you have two opposite reactions. One, the bishop believes could have been true and probably it is true. But here you have person who's doubting, a doubter, a very negative person, negative thinking person. Let's look at this, how it's supposed to be spelled. Even I am not very clear in French. It's not in my language or our language. Monsieur. So, yes, monsieur. Monsieur. So it's similar to Mr. or Sir. Mon Dieu is again a French expression. It's saying, my God, my gosh, good Lord, my God. It's something like, hey, Katijo, something like that. So don't take it as a complicated meaning, a simple expression. Us. Or hey, Kate, it is the same thing. So she said, it is hopeless, we will have nothing left. Nothing left. She said, it's a lot of estate means land, gamzong, it's a lot of estate, so she is 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 very, very sad, and then she starts crying also, as you see in the scene. And then finally, she consoles herself, saying something like, ama thil, ama gam, ama sum, ama thu thu, something like that, what have I to do? So this is how the first scene ends.